Have you ever thought to yourself, do you know what? I'd like to be just a little bit famous, just a little bit. Whereas I guess the job that I do, it's a bit of a byproduct, but I've never even seen myself as anything like that because I've loved radio since I was little. But former BBC correspondent Penny Haslam has started an illustrious career in the BBC video sales. So you were flogging, you were flogging <laughs> videos. I'd about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You were flogging noddy tapes. No, I was the secretary to the department that flogged noddy, only fools and horses. To be, uh, so BBC Worldwide? To BBC Worldwide. Wow, okay. To, and I was in the overseas video department. So I wasn't even in the main bit. I started off my career at the BBC in such a peripheral, you know, completely far away from where I actually ended up, which was on live television 20 years later. But yes, I was a secretary when but I that, started. Do, do I worked know, my way to the top. A lot of people knock the BBC. And they, do? they do. Do you know what? But it is great for careers because you can start and it lets you, there is a big career path in the BBC, isn't there? Yes. So if you have a, a dreams of working in the BBC, BBC. You can start as a secretary somewhere. Yeah. Have enthusiasm, and, have yeah. common sense, show willing, smile, mm-hmm. be prepared to do stuff that other people wouldn't do, like make tea, yeah. print well, that's, scripts. That's the key. I always, when people come in and work experience and stuff, and you know they're asking for advice, or if I do public speaking and people ask advice about radio and stuff, make tea, because a cup of tea opens up a conversation, doesn't it? Make tea and smile. Yeah, it does. I had it? a smile policy at the BBC, actually. <laughs> I was in, a, in I was a, a senior producer on a Radio 4 programme called Moneybox, which yes. was all about personal finance. Didn't understand a word of it. But anyway, I managed somehow to, li- to, to limp <laughs> through that. And um, I used to walk through the department that made Panorama. Everyone was very serious. As very as you can imagine, it's in television very, center, television center, White City, very serious. Here's me from Manchester. Hiya, and I, I thought one year's day, probably a bit like this time of you know the year, going back to work. I thought, oh, what's going to make a difference? I can't. I was a bit shy. I didn't want to do networking. I didn't really know how to approach people and say hi. I work in news. I know about finance. Is there any way I can get a job on telly or anything like? Nothing like that. I had no confidence really in that way. And I thought, well, I know how to smile. I'm going to yeah. adopt a smile policy. And do you know, it frightened the life out of these panorama people. I'd walk through the main, the open plan office, go, morning, <laughs> hi. And they'd be like, oh my God, who's that friendly northerner? I do that. When I first started <laughs> work here, I, I say hello to everyone. Yes. It doesn't matter because to me, we're all fighting for the same thing. The, the people who clean these studios are as important as I am. Yes. We are all fighting for the greater good. Yeah. And I've always thought that. And it's a privilege to work it's here. It's an honour and a privilege mm. to just be behind, be on stage, be on be Behind a live microphone, or just yeah. it's just a, it's a, it's an honour. Yeah, so just, you should serve your audience absolutely. and look after the people who you work with. Too right. Brilliant. I like that. that well done, Stephanie. Bring well it done. On. Thanks. Yeah. So this book. So what? What made? Because it's not it's not the world's biggest book, is it? And I think <laughs> no. And I, and I say it's a this, pamphlet. Is that what no, you're saying? No, I say what is it? Under ninety? Is it under ninety? It's forty thousand words. Yeah. And a lot of business books are double that, eighty thousand. This is exactly. What and I meant. the trend, I think, is heading towards. You know, you want to read. Some Something on a train ride. You want to get on a plane, buy a book, and read it and finish it by the time you get there. And you want easy to understand, accessible, downloadable, instantly usable tips, techniques, ideas, rather than it being a ponderous concept, you know, ideology or intellectual sort of theories and all the rest of it. So I wanted a book. I mean, the title, Make Yourself a Little Bit Famous. I could have called it How to Raise Your Profile and Get Known for What You Do. How to, uh, you know, Increase Your Visibility, all that kind of stuff. But I thought, no, no, it's boring. So I speak about this stuff. I started off speaking about going on TV and radio because that was my background. And actually, it dawned on me that a lot of people who come on air maybe wait for that opportunity. They're like, oh, my God, the mighty BBC has mm. has rung me. It's amazing. But obviously, with the advent of social media and using smartphone video the, the and writing blogs, you are your own mini publisher. If you are a business owner, if you are a freelancer, if you are an employee who's ambitious for their career, you've got all these free-to-use opportunities well, you should make more of them. So I started mm. speaking about that. And I and it's one of those phrases that I really struggled to find my phrase. And it was in anger, really, that I it came out of my mouth, one of those. I was on the phone to a friend. She was going, well, you know, you're doing all this speaking and stuff, but you haven't got a very sexy title. And I went, I oh, know, I'm just calling it something like the expert advantage or <laughs> get out there more. You know, it's all a bit dull and dry. And she said, what is it you're trying to help people do? 
I said, oh, for goodness sake, I'm just trying to help people just make themselves a little bit famous. And we both went quiet and went, ooh, that's, that's the it. one. That's yeah. It. <laughs> And whenever I say it to people, they smile and go, yeah, because no one wants to be massively famous. But equally, you can't be a best kept secret and do well, can you? No, I think it's and also it's about having just the right amount of profile, isn't it? Yeah. Too much. You can be in too people's faces too. It's yes. like those people on, on Facebook that update their statuses constantly. I know. What did I have for lunch? Yeah, Ooh. exactly. Or so you, you end the, up muting them, don't you? But if you just do the right amount and you've just got the right amount of profile, yes. people have in a little right bit of way, intrigue. In the right way. So you've got a show on a Saturday night on another radio station. Yeah. It's a BBC station. Yeah. It's in the north. We can say it. We're, we're grown ups. Manchester. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. It's about vinyl. It's records, isn't it? I love it. So you're expert in this field. You're not going, oh, look at me, come to me, I've got a show. Mm. You're going, right, we've got some vinyl, we've got some interest here, we've got some meat, you've got, a meat, you've got an angle. And I think that's what puts people off getting on social media or speaking about what they do is because they see it as being a bit show-offy. Mm. Whereas my book, Make Yourself a Little Bit Famous, tries to help you see how you can be useful and showcase your knowledge and experience in a little bit of an expert way. Because I so think, you're not just tweeting about your lunch. Exactly. And I think it's just, it's it's putting those things out there, isn't it? That make people, it's, I've always tried to use, the, someone told me this many, many years ago when I first started, less is always more. Mm. Say and, more about less. Exactly. Don't confuse people. Don't give them too much. It's just one or two ideas, but expand on that. But you need quite a lot of confidence to be able to do mm. that. So I help people. I help business owners. I help employees and leaders, that sort of thing, raise their profile. And um, I start by asking them to think about their pet subjects. So okay. what's their, not what's your, when you ask people, what's your expertise? Most people go, well, I'm not an expert because they're not, they're humble. They're mm. not like braggarts and going, yes, I'm the world leading expert in. They are actually going, well, I, I, what do I know? Well, what are you passionate about? What have you got experience in? What do you want to be known for? Mm. And mostly people have two or three areas and then I say, well, find where those areas are going to be most useful to your customers or potential candidates, maybe, or investors or audiences or who do you want to get in front of? And where's that really good fit going to be? And then you're away, really. You're off. And well, you're it's, running. that becomes your brand, yes. doesn't it? Yeah. And once you've that, got your yeah. brand out, because every single one of us, regardless, you know, you uh, you may own a nail salon, you may own a hairdresser's, you might own a, a, a you might be a guy with a van. Who goes around and just, you know, because everyone needs a man with a van. Yeah. But you're a brand. Yes. And if you can show that you understand your customer's pain exactly. through your expertise, mm -hmm. then you're more likely to get more people attracted to you and your product or your service or your career and what you can do for the organisation you work for. But all of this came out of a place where I was really struggling as an employee at the BBC and I'd... I'd, I'd, I'd had an appraisal years ago, Stephanie, where the line manager had said, your career is like pie. And it's in the book, it's P-I-E, and he drew on his flip chart a circle, a, a pie chart, yeah. and put P-I-E in it. P, 25% performance. Don't spend too much time on your performance. You've got that covered. I, image, 25% of your effort. Work on your image. What's it going to be? And then the E, well, what was E for? I was like, oh, my God, what, um, what else is there? exposure get an exposure right. for your performance and your image now I wasn't very good at that mm. it showed me the idea of it but annoyingly hadn't given me any of the tools and it came out of a book he didn't even tell me the title of the book it <laughs> had come from written in the 1980s and I I just struggled I was frustrated because at the time 15 years ago what did you do to get exposure there was no social media there's no networking and going up to the boss and going, uh, hi, I'm Penny, Penny Haslam. I work on this programme. I've done a great job. Um, that's it. Yeah, how you know, can I you get more? You're and not you, salespeople. You, yeah, you're not. You've got yeah. numbers to show off and like, so it felt like a bit elevator pitchy and a bit show offy. But now you've got no excuse, have you? You've got a great following on Instagram and social media, haven't you, yourself? Try and bother them a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but I do. I, I try not to bother people too much. But I also try and use social media in a positive way yes, as well. Yeah. I do this thing on a Saturday night. This is me talking about myself now. But I do this thing called Kitchen Belters where I DJ in my kitchen on a Saturday night between six and seven and I play 90s dance classics. Wow. And I've hit a demographic which is people in their 30s to 50s who used to go out clubbing in the 90s, but they're making tea, the kids are running around, I'm doing shout-outs for kids and all that. It's just me in my kitchen. You need a club night. 
I, that's the Don't next you? thing. That's the next thing. But it's kind of quite nice, actually, not doing it in a club because people are not falling over you and spilling gin and tonics no, all no, over you. No, this is a club Just that start, starts at 8 o'clock and finishes at 10.30 to yeah, back in time starts, for the yeah. babysitter. Well, that's the idea, isn't it? Probably take it somewhere <laughs> like that. But it's, I think people, it's, to use, it's using social media in a different way because as you just mentioned 15 years ago, there was no social media. There was no YouTube. Whereas children these days, children are making themselves a little oh, yes. bit famous. Yes, they whether know it's, how to. Whether it's just, you know, making little videos about their Lego Lego connection, collections or if it's something to do with Fortnite or something like that. Well, just speaking really fluently to the camera, the lens in their phones mm. and the phone camera is incredibly useful I help people um, work out how to do that well without feeling like an idiot or feeling too exposed so then they can utilize the popularity of video yeah. so they're not doing it in a rubbishy way that goes on for seven minutes and they're in their car less talking is more. less is more little bites little uh, bits of content it's all about content um, and what we had before was advertising marketing PR all of which was expensive um, much of which was inauthentic. Mm. And of course, we've got an issue now with customers and people who are listeners, you know, everyone who we interact with, with trust. And establishing yourself as a personality or a figurehead or somebody who is genuine and interesting and has useful stuff to share with the world, then you're off to a better start than throwing a load of money at a PR campaign oh, that's going to get you a few bits. And PR and marketing has its place. I'm not knocking it at mm. all. But this is like another level for individuals to make themselves a little bit famous. People buy people, don't they? And this is the first This is the first book I've seen on something like this. And the, the amazing Steph McGovern has given a great oh, quote. Quite... She, I employed her. Really? Many years ago, yeah, when I was on Moneybox, I met her and she was such a bright spark. Mark. She's incredible. She's the f she's left BBC Breakfast now. Yeah, she's no she's longer doing the business the new presenter. New Channel Four there. show. I know. We can't say it's going to be brilliant, but it is. Because there <laughs> of course, are it other is. and it's and it's been made and it's been hosted <laughs> here in Leeds as well. So yeah. which is which is great. Yeah. You so know. she's endorsed the book and said it is a great thing for your career and your business, hasn't she? So. Yeah. She says quite simply the best advice to help you attract attention for your business or career. Steph McGovern. And I've her. hopefully done it in a really funny way. So there's loads of funny stories in there, and it's quite self-deprecating because I'm that way inclined. Likewise. I'm I'm from the north, you know, we are, aren't we? And um, it's it's a trucks along in a way that maybe it's not stuffy or corporate mm. sounding. Mm. So it's a bit of a laugh. And also hopefully puts a pin in all the nervousness around speaking on stages or taking part in a panel discussion or chairing one or um, going on TV and radio and having a chat with lovely people like yourselves and oh, just saying you. it's not combative, it's not to be feared, let's all just have a bit of a laugh. And also you've got to start somewhere. No one saw Steve Jobs do his first talk, did they? No, they didn't. But he probably now... had a neck rash and a bit of a twitch, you know, and a, a read is... from his script. You know, we didn't see that. All we see is the the amazingness of these the people. The finished product. And we compare our own internal sort of experience of stuff with that and go, well, I could never be like that. So hopefully this book helps cover that shortfall, that distance. What was it like when it first arrived, the box, well... and you opened it up? Because you... <laughs> this is your first book. <laughs> yeah. And you and you opened it up and all the books are there because this is your baby, isn't it? And you it get to release this to like the world. That. You've released it to the yes. world. Yes, uh, it was incredible. But I have to say, there's something. Sometimes you're busy, and sometimes big things in your life you don't tend to notice as much. Mm. And I think when I saw somebody on Twitter go, "Oh my gosh, this is a lifetime achievement, Penny." I was like, ha, ha, actually it is. But I'd been too busy and I hadn't really seen it like that because I've been so involved. But you know what? There's a trend for box opening videos on social media, apparently. <laughs> there is, actually. I've seen them. So I opened my box of books that arrived at my house in all innocence, just going, oh, right, let's let's video this. My daughter, my 14-year-old daughter videoed it. It's not a very good video. I've got a plant coming out of the top of my head. You know, there's a bookshelf behind me. It's all a bit dodgy. You know, I should have set it a bit better. Anyway, I go, oh, my gosh, my book. And I sniffed it. The smell. I just go on, sniff it. Oh, that is That's good, that. quite unique, isn't it? So, mm. yeah. So that video got something like 15,000, 16,000 views. It's a rubbish video. I despair of the <laughs> But do you know what? Having that plant poking out the side of your head, that's authenticity. Yes. And I think that's what people look for in videos these yeah. days, isn't it? They want something that's authentic. Yeah, and, and joyful. And yeah, and it, yeah, joyful. Because yeah. we all want, gosh, in the world that we're living today, we want some positivity. Yes. We need some human fun and people who are just willing to just have a bit of a laugh. I worked with an employment lawyer in Leeds who set up on his own. He'd left a big corporate, faceless organisation, law firm, set upon his own 
And he said, I don't want to be like the rest. And I want to work with people who are like me. They're fun, a bit left field, yeah. like having a laugh and doing things differently. Can trust me. And so we set him up with how to do videos on social media. Um, and he is just has a lot of fun with mm. it. And he does daft skits, which is not like an employment lawyer should be. Is no, it? but, he's, but... He's, he's, he's turned it on its head. <clears throat> and I think that's what I've always tried to do with my career. Just turn it on its head a little mm. bit, not try and do the norm. And yeah. with this show, you know, speaking to yourself, it's, I want this show to be like three hours off from the real world, but we deal with real issues as well. So it's not all heavy. You are very much yourself, Stephanie. I, I get the feeling just, anyway, which is what you have to be on air. It's very difficult though when you move from maybe a corporate organisation yeah, into setting up on your own, um, where you're not speaking and, fl and being fluent every day in your own voice. Mm. Um, I know when I first left the BBC, and of course I was doing um, National BBC News, business news. I remember you. Do you? Yeah, of course do. <laughs> long, thick hair. It's a bit hot <laughs> under the lights. But um, I used to, when I first started talking about my stuff, I was ever so buttoned down, buttoned up, whatever the phrase is. Almost institutionalised. Yes, and yeah. I didn't know my own voice. And it wasn't until I stepped into the sort of space of not really giving one for a while. You yeah. know, going, oh, sod it. Sod it. A bit like the employment lawyer, a bit like yourself, you know, sod it. And people are drawn to that or they're not. And that's fine, isn't it? But I think people <clears> want <throat> more of that in 2020. 2020. I think they need it in 2019 then. Uh, more of that in 2020. Yes. They want authenticity. And this is why this book is brilliant. And we need it from our leaders yeah and we need it from our politicians mm -hmm. and we need it from businesses and brands and stuff that has perhaps let us down in the past people need to know that we are looking at them and we need to trust them uh, in a really good positive way so show us the show us the way make yourself a little bit famous is the book and it's available now from penny haslam thank you so much